Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to learn how to create a simple enemy for your 2D side scroller in Godot. While it may be simple in concept, we're going to look at a bunch of cool tips and tricks to make it more dynamic both in respect to gameplay and game feel. We'll cover simple enemy AI, shaders, and cool animation player stuff. I also want to shout out all of you guys for getting us over the 1000 subscriber mark. It's crazy how fast this community is growing, and I love all the positive energy everyone brings to the comment sections with super cool questions that I love answering, so keep them coming. Anyways, let's get into the video. By the end of the video, you should have something that looks a little like this. Goomba-like enemies that die when you jump on their head, and kill you when you walk into the side of them. Alright, let's jump into it. First thing we want to do is add a new scene. We're going to add a child to this. We're going to go ahead and give it a character body 2D and name it Flower Enemy. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and add another child. This will be a collision shape 2D. Once we've added that in, we can go ahead and add another node. That will be an animated sprite 2D. I'm going to go ahead and move that above there and we're going to add new sprite frames. We're going to add two animations. One will be walk and the other will be die. To add our frames, we can click the little waffle icon and go to our assets folder and click on our sprite frames. We have a one row and four columns, so we'll change that up there and just select our frames. I think I kind of want my animation to be a little faster, so I'm just going to up it to eight frames per second. And I think I like how that looks. And then we'll go ahead and add our death frame, which is the same process as before. So I'll go ahead and select that. And the last thing we want to do is go back to our walk animation and make sure we select autoplay. Now that we've set that up, we can move on to the next step. We want to add our collision shape. I want it to roughly be the size of the body. You want to make sure to give leeway for the player to jump over so it feels good. Next, we want to go to the collision tab in our inspector panel, and we want to make sure that our collision mask is looking for our environment and our player collision layers. We'll then go and create another layer called enemy that all of our enemies will exist on, and we'll change it. Perfect. Now we just need to go to our player and make sure our player is also looking for our enemy layer. There we go. Now we can add our flower enemy into our scene. So I'll go ahead and drag him in and I'll position him right there. That looks about good. All right, let's go check it out in game. So now if I jump over and jump on his head, look at that. I'm standing on top. Now let's head back to our flower enemy scene. I want you to attach a script to the flower enemy node. Once we've gone ahead and done that, I want you to go to the top of the script and give it a class name also called flower enemy. Now let's go to our player scene and you can see I have a node called hurtbox. All it is is an area 2D with a collision shape. The collision shape visibility is disabled right now but if I turn it on you can see it's slightly larger than my player's collision shape. This will be what we detect when our player runs into our enemy. Now let's go check out the script that we created in another video showing how to add spikes to your platformer. You can already see we have the onbody entered signal connected, which is checking for our spikes. But we also wanted to check for our flower enemy, which is why we gave it the class name. Now if we go back, I want to remind you where you find your signals. You can see I already have one signal connected here, and if I double click on it, it'll actually show which script it's connected to, which is our hurtbox script. Now, before we go any further, we need to make sure that our area 2D, which is our hurt box, is looking for our enemy. So we just have to click on the mask there. Perfect. As a reminder, our hurt box triggers a property in our player called is dead, which triggers this animation and the reload sequence. You can see here, I have a setter on my is dead variable. So every time the is dead is switched to true or false, it goes through this conditional statement here. So if it's true, we start our animation, we wait for it to finish and we reload the scene. So let's check it out. We bump into our enemy, we die, and we reload, just like that. Perfect. Let's move on to the next step. Alright, let's add another node to our flower enemy. This will be an area 2D. We're going to give it the name Player Detection Box. And then we'll go ahead and add a Collision Shape 2D to that. Now we have to add our Rectangle Collider. And we're going to fit it just above the enemy's head. I'll give it this pink color so you know the difference. Now, we have to make sure that we set our layers right, so we need to set that to our enemy collision layer, and we don't need it to detect anything, so we can just disable the mask. Now, I want to give it a group name, so if we go to our signals, we can go to group, and we hit the plus button. We'll give it the name enemy. Perfect. Now we can head back to our player scene, and we want to add a node to our player. We're going to add another area 2D. 
and we're gonna give it the name Hitbox. This will be our player's area that damages the enemy. Now let's click on our Hitbox, and we wanna make sure it's looking for our enemy. So under our Collision tab, make sure the mask is selecting our enemy. Perfect. Now let's add a Collision Shape 2D, and create a Box Collider. We want to make it so that it's under our player's feet as this is the area we want to damage our enemy, just like this. It's in the green. Now let's attach a script and we have to add a signal in before we start anything. So go to our signals and you can see we have our body entered like we looked at earlier, but this time we want our area entered signal. When we double click, click on the script we want and click connect. And now if we go over to our script, you can see it's right here. So we want to say if our area is in our group enemy, like we set up earlier, we want the area to queue free, but we actually want the area's owner to queue free. Now, if we go into our game and we run to the side, we die. And if we go over and jump on the enemy's head, he disappears. Now we want to start setting up our flower enemies movement. Let's go to the script we created earlier. First, we want to add in our physics process function. Then make sure we're calling move and slide before we forget. After we've done that, we want to call a function called movement and we'll be passing in delta. This will control our flower's horizontal movement. Once we've done that, we want to add in a couple of variables and constants up at the top. The first one will be speed, which will be an export variable. Then we'll add in our gravity, which will be a constant. And then we want to have our direction, which will keep track of our flower's direction. And then we'll call our velocity.x and times that by speed and direction. Now in our game, if we go over and check, we can see our flowers bumping into the wall. But if he bumps into the wall, we want him to flip around. So let's go ahead and add a Raycast 2D, and we're gonna name it Wall Detection Ray. We're gonna make sure that it's looking for our tile set, which is on Collision Layer 1. And then we wanna position the ray right in front of the flower enemy's face. Once we've set that up, we can head over to our code. We're gonna add a couple on ready variables, which includes our ray, and we're gonna create a new function called Update Direction. We're gonna check if the ray isn't colliding, we return. And if it is colliding, we flip the direction by negative one, and we also go ahead and update our ray cast to be pointing the other direction. Now let's see if that works. So if we jump over here and watch the flower hit the wall, perfect, he bumps around, awesome. But you can see his animation sprites kind of messed up and the gravity is not working. So we got a couple things to fix. Let's start off by adding in our gravity and then we'll create a function called update animation, which flips our animation sprite depending on our enemy's direction. Now, if we go into our game, and we check if the flower bumps into the wall, the animation sprite flips. Awesome. Now let's see if the gravity is also working. And there he goes. But what if we don't want him to fall off the cliff? First, we'll add another Raycast 2D. And we'll give it the name Ledge Detection Ray. We're going to position this ray directly in front of our flower and we'll have it pointing downwards. It'll be detecting whether he can see a tile in front of him or not, which is on layer one, as said before. Now, if we go into our script, we want to also be checking if our ledge detection ray is colliding. And if it's not, that means there's a ledge. So we want to flip the direction and flip our ledge detection ray. Now, if we go into our game, we can see if this is working. So he bumped. And now if we jump over his head, you'll see the ledge and turn around. Awesome. Let's start adding some more details to our flower enemy. In our main scene, we have a canvas modulation so we can have lighting in our 2D scene. But right now our flower enemy is getting faded into the background, so we're going to go ahead and add a point light. To be able to see the changes, we want to add a color rec to the background as the light will shine on it. Now if we go back to our point light, we want to add a gradient texture and we want to change the fill mode to radial. Now we want to position the gradient in the center there and then we need to flip the colors around. So black will go over there and white will go over there and we'll kind of fiddle with it till it looks like something we like. And then we're gonna go ahead and change the energy, bring it down a little bit, and then just give it like a nice warm color, like a orange. Perfect. So now we can go ahead and delete that color rect. And if we go into our game, we can see now our enemy has a little light around him, similar to our player. Perfect, I'm happy everything's working. Let's move on to the next step. Next thing we wanna do is add another node, which is our animation player, which just so happens to be one of my favorite nodes in Godot. To add an animation, it's really easy. You just click on the animation button, click new, and give it a name. I want our animation to be two seconds long, so I'm gonna change that over here. And to zoom in on your timeline, you just press control and use the scroll wheel. The first keyframe I wanna add in is on our animation sprite 2D. I wanna switch the animation to our dead animation, which is really easy to do. You just click over here, click on the key, and it adds a new track. 
Now if I press play, you can see the animation switches. Next thing I want to do is add in a call method track. We want to call our cue free on our flower at the end of the animation, so you can just search that here, cue free. And in our player scene, we want to go into our hurtbox script. Instead of cue freeing the enemy directly, we actually want to change a value that we're going to add to our enemy called is dead, and we're going to set that equal to true, just like this. Now, going over to our flower scene, we want to click on the main script, and we're going to go ahead and add a new variable called is dead, and we'll set it to false to start, but we'll give it a setter. And in the setter, if the value is equal to true, we're going to trigger the animation player that we set up earlier. And we also want to pause our physics process. Now, if we go ahead and jump on our flower, you can see he's dying, but our player is also dying. To do this, it's really easy. We just need to make sure we're disabling our flower enemy's collision shape. We'll do that using the animation player. If we click on the collision shape, there's a disable property. If we turn that on and press the key, we can add a new track. Now make sure in the reset you re-enable the collision shape and make sure in the actual collision shape as well that it's re-enabled or else sometimes it doesn't work properly. Alright, in the game here, if we land on the head, you can see we don't die anymore. Perfect. Now we're going to add a hit flash to our enemy when he gets hurt. We're going to do this by adding a shader to our animation sprite 2D. We're going to go through this kind of fast as it's not a shader tutorial. First thing you want to do is add an input node. If we drag it over to the color right away, it's going to be black. That's because we need to select color in our input node. Now that's working properly. Let's add a color parameter. And we're going to increase the intensity all the way so that our sprite turns white when it goes into the color. Just like this. To toggle between them, we want to add an if statement. We'll drag each of these options into the if statement. And we need another node called boolean parameter to toggle between them. Now you'll see we'll change this to enabled. And if we drop down this menu here and we click the true or false button, it'll switch between the two options just like this. And if we go over to our inspector panel, you can actually see that this is an accessible property that we can use with our animation player. So if we go ahead and click on our animation player, we'll create a new track for our enable property. We'll start off with it not being enabled, and then we'll move the track, we'll enable it and click the key, and then we'll move the track again, and we'll disable it and click the key again. And now we'll have a little flash effect. So if we click play, you can see we have a little hit flash. Next thing we want to do is change the visibility. So if we go into our visibility properties tab, we can create a new keyframe and we want to fade our enemy out. And we'll do that by changing the opacity down and clicking on the key. And our animation player will linearly change our opacity. So if we click play and he fades out, perfect. Now let's head into the game. So if we land on the head, we'll hit flash and fade out. Perfect. Let's add particles to our animation. In my player scene, I actually already have some particles set up. So if you want to copy it, here you go. But we're just going to copy this over and we're going to paste it into our flower scene. Using our animation player, we want to create a new property track using the emitting property of our GPU particles. Click the little key, press create, double click on the property and make sure that emitting is set to true. And now if we click play on our animation, it should work perfectly. Awesome. Next thing we want to do is add some sounds. I already had some sounds in my player, so I'm just going to copy them again. And to add these into your animation player, you just go to the play property and press the little key. Now let's add one more sound effect for when our particles get spawned in. We'll go ahead and click on our audio stream player again, and we'll create a new track for the play property. And now that seems to be working. So if we go back, we can play the whole animation. That's looking so good. Let's go into our game. Oh, it's looking even better in here. All right, I want to add a little boost to our player when he bounces on the enemy. So in the hurtbox script, we're just going to change the player's velocity.y and give him a little boost. So now, in game, if we bounce on the flower enemy, we get a little jump action. But you can see our player still interacting with our flower enemy. That's because our player detection box collision shape is not being disabled. So we need to go ahead and disable that in our animation, just like we did before with our flower's collision shape. So if we go back into game now, you can see if we jump on the flower's head, one bounce and he's gone. All right, that's the end of today's video. I hope you guys really enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and subscribe if you want. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below. If you like the asset pack, you can find it on my itch.io page linked in the description below. Again, I just wanna say thank you so much for getting us to 1000 subscribers. We're gonna keep building this community and making new videos. Until the next one, see you guys.